doesn't show love in my love language so I translate I like your hair thank you I translate so my husband and I we meet on physical affection but um, we, we we're not always together right so we make the physical affection very intimate uh, very snugly very loving but uh, otherwise he speaks um, acts of service and I speak words of affirmation and what I've learned to do is translate his love language. If I feel like I need more love from him, I actually go up into my brain and I say, what has he done for me lately? And I translate those acts of service for myself. Would I be able to get advice? You can ask a question here. Um, if, it, if it turns out to be like particular, like something I need to understand your situation, more in order to help you i'll say you got to get a coaching session because i need to ask all these questions um but if it's something like you know what do i do if we don't speak the same love language that's a general answer uh so we shall see if i can help you here or not how do you get the spark back in a long-term relationship see this is one of those general questions that everybody can do um what you want to do is make sure you get in two kisses a day minimum five seconds each there are chemicals produced in a kiss like i have two rules when it comes to kissing if you want to find a committed long-term relationship use a no kissing for three months dating rule if you are in a long-term committed relationship kiss twice a day minimum five seconds each the reason why i have these rules around kissing is because there's a chemical produced in a kiss that if you're looking for a partner makes you think you found the one it makes you think you know everything you need to know even if you kiss by the fourth date, you don't know everything you need to know by then. There's so many things you need to be looking out for. So no kissing for three months means you don't produce a chemical that makes you think they're amazing without you actually having the information needed to tell yourself they are amazing. If you're kissing during a relationship, that same chemical makes you feel more bonded to that person because the chemical in a kiss is an aphrodisiac it's an amphetamine and it's an antidepressant. So if you introduce a zing that makes you excited and makes you happy before you know who someone is, you think they're so great. You don't know them yet. If you have that zing after you're committed in a relationship, you think they're great and it makes you feel closer and more intimate. I've had two dates with a guy, still can't tell how he's feeling about me. Should I just come out and ask? No. Use a no kissing for three months dating rule. Give yourselves time to evolve. Have you kissed him yet? DJ D, have you kissed him yet? I'm gonna open up my um I'm gonna open up my ad live guess. Uh GD, do you wanna come in and do a live with me? How do you break the cycle of zero intimacy when feeling very low self-esteem from it? Start kissing. Get those kisses in. Uh, DJD, I've opened up my, my request to come live with me. Do you want to pop in? We'll have a conversation about this. Uh, where did you get the number one award from? Sounds made up. I am better than any other dating coach out there because I've used everything that I tell you to do I've used the no kissing for three months dating rule and found an amazing partner. I've had zero fights in five years in my 15 year relationship. Show me somebody who's done better than that. Show me somebody who's written eight books on the topic. Show me that person. I want to see their name in here. Is it bad to chase my ex? 100% it is. Not right now, another time, bit off today. Uh, Tammy, what's your question, my love? Feeling no trust, what's your question? Uh, what if the guy you're dating says you're not soulmates because we fight a lot? Um, so, first of all, my husband doesn't believe in soulmates. He's my soulmate. He just doesn't believe in soulmates. If you're fighting a lot, if this is a generous long-term thinker who loves you, Get fixed that shit. Get the fighting finished. No more fighting. 
Uh, how do you bring the spark back when you're separated? That is something we would have to do in a coaching session because I would need to find out what went wrong in your relationship. My boyfriend always wants more and more space, but when I see him, I can tell he missed me. Uh, so that is another thing that would have to be a coaching session. Um, because again, I have to get into the particulars of your relationship to find out what's going wrong. I will get the audio as well. Yes, Fix That Shit is now an audio book. You can get that through the link tree in my bio. Um, so, uh, who is that? Utah. Utah is pretty quiet. I haven't seen your answer yet, Utah. I haven't seen your answer yet. My boyfriend doesn't believe in soulmates either. Right. Yeah. And, and like, just because they don't believe in soulmates doesn't mean you can't, you know, it, it doesn't mean, yeah, the hustle is real. Hustle is real. Here's the thing. When you do what you love, it's not even work. Like, my goal is to actually change the world. I want to change the landscape of dating so that we stop having all these breakups, we stop having all these heartaches, we stop having all these divorces because people, you know, they kiss by the fourth date, right? Then that chemical sets in that tells us, the women, that we know everything we need to know, we are locked in, we have a great three months, which is a honeymoon period, we think that's reality because we don't know any better because our sex ed hasn't taught us what actual relationship bonding is. So we think that's reality, those first three months. And then the chemicals wear down, we start seeing all the red flags, but we're like, oh, it could be so good if only I try harder. We keep these men in relationships with us because they don't want to see us cry. So they stay too long with us. We stay too long with them. We tell ourselves if we live together, it'll get better. And then we don't you know, and then, but it doesn't get better. But then we say, if we get engaged, it'll get better. So then we coerce them into getting engaged with us. And then we say, if we get married, it'll get better. So then we're like, come on marriage. And then we think, well, if we have kids, it'll get better. And then we have kids and it doesn't get better because you pick somebody you never should have kissed in the first place. And then finally you get divorced. And now we have all these broken homes and we have kids who model our behavior. I'm gonna pick somebody I don't know. I'm gonna keep demanding more, thinking it's gonna get better. Ultimately, it doesn't, more broken homes. So this is what I wanna put a stop to. We are monkeys designed to imitate. When we fix the relationship between people, we fix the relationships that are gonna happen when they make kids. So this is a domino effect that I wanna put into place. I'm 27, male and single, working full time, can't seem to meet anyone. Uh, when I do get rejected, it's because I'm too nice. So, so, it's it's not because you're too nice, right? Like it's it's literally not because you're too nice. Um, so so put that notion out of your head. It's just because you just weren't that fit, right? Like. When the last two people I said no to wasn't because they were too nice. It's because they just weren't the best fit for me. I love you. Thank you for making me sane. I'm so here for you. Um, and so seriously, it's just because you're you're seeing somebody, just because you're seeing how things are going to go with somebody, um, doesn't mean it's going to work with every single person that you attempt with. Like basically, if you think of a bowl with like a bunch of purple, um, like a bunch of purple marbles and there's one green marble and that one green marble is your fit, you're literally just every single time reaching into the bowl and then going, oh, wrong one, oh, wrong one. And the reason why you're reaching in blindfolded is because we don't know who that person is until we get to know them a little bit more and then disclose who they are. And say, oh, okay, no, wrong one. So it's the law of averages. Don't be disappointed because this one and that one and that one said, no, sorry, wrong one. You just go, okay, I'm gonna keep going because it's the law of averages. You, you gotta work at science, right? So listen, I'm not gonna go into a job interview and come out of it and not getting the job and say, oh, it's because I was too nice. It's because I wasn't the right fit for them. Does that mean I stop going to job interviews? No, I'm gonna keep showing up at job interviews until I find the one that fits. Good morning, my love, hello. 
Love your books. Fix that shit is my guide. I love it. Uh, what do I do if my partner has been lying about something from when we were separated and I found out? So you were not together, right? So what was what was the lie? Trash can, trash can, do you want to come live with me? Any tips to get over a breakup? I have a whole book for you. It's come back queen. Whole book for you. Guys, don't give me puzzle pieces. If you split up your message to me, I have no idea what you're saying. Why does she always try to find something offensive in what I say, even when it's totally innocent? I don't know. Um, I don't know without a coaching session because I don't know what you're saying. Um, right? I don't know what you're saying. We're very happy at the moment in long distance relationship. When apart, he only wants to talk every few days. He'll think we'll lose spark. So, yeah. Uh, I So it's it's okay to not talk every single day right so what he doesn't like is uh thank you for that advice definitely helps new perspective yay um so here's the thing he doesn't want to get on the phone with you and be bored and annoyed right if you guys are getting on the phone or on facetime with each other and literally have nothing to say because nothing new has happened in your lives there's no new developments in anything then he's gonna get bored. And what he doesn't wanna do is get bored of you because the emotions that we have when we are communicating with somebody become associated to that person. And he doesn't want to associate you with, I'm bored and I'm annoyed, right? Because he's putting time aside to get on FaceTime or on a call with you and he's thinking about the other things he could be doing while you guys have nothing to say to each other. So that could be what he means by that. But who here is in a long distance relationship? Say, here I am. Is it a bad sign she never is in the mood? So I don't do uh, bedroom questions on here. I only do them on one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Uh, is it bad to leave when your partner is in a bad place, even if they take it out on you? It is absolutely not, especially if they take it out on you. Here I am. Uh, so those of you who are in a long distance relationship, I have a free guide for you. You're going to find that in the link tree in my bio. So it's how to maintain closeness, how to create more intimacy, how to overcome conflict. I am married. I am married. So somebody came on and, and apparently wasn't able to answer my question. How can you get along better with your boyfriend? I feel like we argue and fight a lot. So I have a whole book for you, my love. It's called Fix That Shit. Fix That Shit. So my husband and I fought for 10 years. We haven't had a fight in five years. This is how I did it. I don't ask you to do anything I haven't done myself. If you want it in audiobook, you can only get it through the link to my bio. Otherwise, if you want ebook or paperback, you can hit up Amazon. Just to get yourself out there, um, get yourself out there. So definitely create a bio on all the dating sites, right? So OkCupid, okay uh, Hinge, Bumble, get out there on all of them because you're going to get the lake jumpers. I don't know what that is. Uh, here's the thing. Once we talk, we don't stop talking for hours. He's just cautious because he cares. Right. So that's so this is working, right? Like like you you leave a few days and then you talk for hours and this works for him. So do you want to do something that works for him so he continues to associate good feelings to you? Or do you want to coax him into something that doesn't and start creating frustration? Hey, I was playing the game. This or that with my man. He chose money over love. Is that bad? No, it's practical. Uh, it's, it's practical. And men tend to be practical. And that's okay. Because do you know what he can do with money? He can supply stability. He can supply safety. He can supply the food that you need, right? So protect, profess, provide. So this is provide and protect. 
So yeah, my husband would choose money over love. I'm, I'm pretty damn sure he would because he's a practical man. And men love you through their practicality. This is why I made a post saying, if he's buying you dinner, if he's taking care of things for you, like making sure your car is in order, he's loving you in a practical way, but they need money in order to do that. So they will show you their love in how they spend their money. Um, so for him, money comes first so he can continue to love you. If he doesn't have money, he doesn't, in his mind, have a means to protect you because he can't put a shelter over your head. He doesn't have a means to provide for you so he doesn't have money to buy you food. So I get that. I think that's okay. How do you know if you've fallen out of love? Uh, when you become, uh, when you become indifferent, indifferent to the other person, the opposite of love is indifference. Um, how can you recover from that? They're going to have to step forward in the way that you need them to, but you also need to be settled in your mind too. You have to be realistic about what it is that you want. Uh, I might agree. Long distance relationship thing. Then how do I hold myself back from missing him so much and being moody? So this is you managing your own emotions. This is a great question. So the question is, ah, hello, Miss Honey. The question is, how do I manage my own emotions? So that's fantastic. So this is a combination of books. What you want to do is you want to get fixed that shit to learn how to manage yourself and understand him better. Um, you know, like, like pull back on that desire to vomit onto him, vomit that anxiety. Um, and you're going to get custom made. Like, do you know, where are you? Uh, Green, do you want to come do a live with me? Do you want to come live with me? Tis for overcoming jealousy, etc. after being cheated on, still with the same person. Oh, love, love, love. Uh, Miss, uh, what is that, 120? You want to come do a live with me? I would, ad I would address both of your questions, ladies. Good afternoon, so nice to see you. Hello, Sam. Thanks for always being so kind and helpful. Yes, of course, my love. Yes, yeah, sure, but can I cover my camera? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, 120 as well, if you want to come in live too. I would do whichever, whichever one of you comes in first. Whichever one of you comes in first. There's an audio only option, is that right? One second. I want to wake up where you are. I just got another shipment of makeup. I'm obsessed. I might have a problem. I might have a problem. I got another shipment of tart makeup. Uh, unable to do a live because of the environment I'm currently in. Okay. Um, so uh, I can't click the request button. I don't know why that happens. I don't know why that ha why. Because I have it open. No guest requests. Uh, okay. Oh, I just ordered from Cocoon Apothecary. I've been getting messages from people. So Cocoon Apothecary is the skincare that I use. Um, who wants who wants to like use amazing skincare? Uh, who wants to use absolutely amazing skincare? I've done a few videos about it. Hold on, cocoon apothecary, good. Me, so I just put her at in the comments uh, and I want to order it for my mama too, who's in Vancouver. Uh, so I just put her at in the comments, so at cocoon apothecary. If you use coupon code Chantal, C-H-A-N-T-A-L, you're gonna get 20% off. Her skincare is absolutely amazing. I've been turning, like I finally got her on TikTok. I waited, like I kept encouraging her to like make TikToks because I wanted to wait till she has something for you guys to watch before telling you guys about her so that like it was worth following her already because there's some content. Um, and um, yeah, so a couple of you guys, some of you guys have gone on and ordered her stuff and you're already messaging me saying how much you like it. I love, I used your coupon code. Thank you. Yes. Uh, where do I find the LDR sheet you mentioned earlier? It's in the link tree in my bio. 
one guest request, Jackie. What's your goal? What's your goal? Being my goal is to change the world, Jackie. Oh hi. <laughs> hey, my love. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm super good. What's your question, my love? Um, my question is, if you're like in a toxic relationship for a while, and like, I don't know, it's like a flip switch, and the next day, you, I guess it's like PTSD. You just have a lot of dreams, and you can't really feel anything. I feel like I don't have emotions towards the person anymore or towards anything. Um, I don't know if it's from trauma or could it be like some partial PPD as a mother. All right. So you said you've been in a toxic relationship for a while. It lasted about four or five years and they were some pretty important years of my life, I could say. All right. You're not in it anymore? No, but we have a child together. So you're, so. you're co-parenting. Yeah, but I just feel numb to the situation. Like, I feel like I don't even really care for the person. And lately, I feel very disconnected from myself as well. I'm not sure if there's a word or term for that. Um, right. Oh, you may, can you give me one second? Yeah. Okay. I hear, I hear my dog barking, and I'm like, am I getting a delivery? Oh, oh that's my hubby. That's my ma'am. Okay, never mind. Uh, okay, so how long has it been since you guys split up? Uh, maybe six months, seven months. Okay. And so do you find that, um, like, like, after the split, like, you've been in the same state of numbness? Or has your numbness changed at all since the split? Have you become more numb or less numb? Um, more I was fine I was probably crying over it like two weeks ago or like three weeks ago and then out of nowhere like I just felt irritated and like I don't really care for anything like emotionally wise it's just annoying <laughs> right so that's actually a good thing what you're describing you are you're you're evolving through your feelings right um yeah you're evolving through your feelings that's that's what I see here so it's good it's good um, because the state that you're in right now, like, like you went through grief, right? Would you say that you've, you've been experiencing, uh, like a, you know, some time going through grief over the relationship, like over the end of the relationship? Yeah. You're yeah. Well, I had a lot of postpartum depression cause I had a newborn as well. So it was really hard. Um, yeah, yeah but now like, I also like go to the gym a lot and it's like, it yeah. feels like it helps, but I just feel so numb. Like I just work out nonstop and it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> right. But I guess uh, if you say it's a good thing, that's a good sign. I just felt a little worried because I couldn't recognize like myself. <laughs> so on the one hand you say numb, but on the other hand, you're saying just annoyed with everything. Yeah, well, like, if somebody's, like, being emotional or, you know, crying, it's just, like, uh, like I don't have time for that. <laughs> okay, and mm. when you say being emotional or crying, do you mean your kids? Um, Everybody, yeah. <laughs> uh, everybody. I have little siblings. Like, what was your that? Ex, is your ex being emotional and crying at all? Yes, yeah. Him, too? Why? He's being emotional and crying? Yeah, a lot. It's because I guess uh, he thinks I just did it from one day to the next, but it's like I literally just snapped out of it. <laughs> right. And he's emotional and crying because you're over it and you refuse to go back with him? Or why is he? Why is he yeah, um, I'm over it. I refuse. And I'm just like yeah. content of being a, I'm in a, the For the first time in forever, I'm actually very content with being alone. And he's not used to that. Um, so he obviously thinks it's like for somebody else or something, but I'm literally so content with, uh, being alone. It's crazy. Like, yeah. so, I mean, yeah, I have my friends and I hang out with my friends a lot as well, but I'm fine with being alone. Like, I don't feel anything towards the situation anymore. Good. So you are evolving through your feelings 
and and you are ascending through your feelings and you are coming to a place where you're like i'm done with this like and and i really want you like i'm glad that you've taken all this time that it's been six months since your split right you're not falling into your next relationship but you're also not falling back into relationship with him which is good this is very good you're going to the gym you're hanging out with friends this is good this is very good i want you to keep doing what you're doing um do get fix that shit because this is your book of ninja mind tricks to co-parent in such a way that you get peace and cooperation from him but stand your ground like when you say it was a toxic relationship what were the behaviors that were toxic um well i guess con- we very controlling um not really giving me my space no trust always insecure and it was only really because um he he failed the relationship by cheating a few times so that's why <laughs> he yeah. was like that so it was get really tiring cuz i was literally like I go to school, I go to work, and I have a newborn, and he was not, he, we didn't live together or anything, so we did before as well, but I left when I was pregnant, so that was very traumatic for me, I think, and I'm barely, like, I feel upset towards the situation, I'm barely getting, like, over it. Yeah, yeah, um, stay on track, right, stay on track, you're doing the right thing, do get fixed that shit so that you co-parent, um, because ultimately what you, what you want is, you know, like you're taking your space, you've got your own space. You're not letting him, uh, encroach on you anymore. You're not letting him control you anymore, but like do the meditation to calm your emotions and not be reactive, to stay strong, to, to maintain your, do the tricks in here, you know, the, nin- the, the ninja mind tricks to, uh, create some goodwill with him because you do want him to co-parent well you want him to to pay his child support you want him to want to be a dad uh you want him to be plugged into being a dad because your child does need both parents um but the stuff that you're going to read and fix that shit is going to help you you know stay strong within yourself while also setting boundaries while also getting his cooperation and peace okay i'll go ahead and look at it (laughs) You're doing, you're doing well. You're doing all the right things, okay? Yeah, it, it was just kind of scary to the point where you wonder if you're, like, disconnected with yourself because you don't understand why you don't feel anything. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it's, this, but, is, this okay. is you having enough. This is you becoming strong. This is you doing the no more, right? The, like, no more. Like, I'm done with this. No more. I'm not falling for this anymore. No more. So the, you're not numb. You're actually feeling, and you're feeling all the right things, and you're doing all the right things. So good. Stay on track. Do get no more assholes also, because when you go towards your next relationship, you need to use that no kissing for three months dating rule, because you need to make sure you don't fall into a relationship with somebody like that again. Oh, okay. Yeah. I get you. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot you need to be looking for in those three months. A lot of behaviors you need to be looking for and looking at. So the 12 character traits, like there's there's just so many things that need to fall into place. And especially now that you're a single mom, my love, right? Like you need to be extra careful about the person who becomes a father figure to your child. So you kissing for three months dating rule. Look for all those traits and qualities. Look for them to include you in your life meet their friends and family before you kiss them so that you can look at who they surround themselves with because we are a product of the people we surround ourselves with if you don't like who their friends are how they are how they treat their partners don't kiss that one yeah okay well thank you that makes sense (laughs) yes you're welcome lovely have a good one you too have a good day thank you bye-bye bye Bye. Yes, look at all the comments. Yes, she got this. She's doing well. She's doing well. Sometimes we don't, um, like, we don't know how to read ourselves, right? Uh, Which is kind of too bad. Kind of too bad. I feel heartbroken and need guidance. Yeah, I got my, I got my, uh, I got my thing open. 
Yes, Quinn. Why is my girlfriend clingy sometimes, but often seems distant to distance herself? I don't know love without talking to her. Oh, we got two doggies. Oh, guess who got a bath last night? Little Charlie. He's so clean now. You want to come see mama? Charlie, do you want to come snuggle? I have, I have puppy, puppy roadkill in my, uh, I dumped him like you said I needed to. He was controlling everything hurts at the moment, but you get the freedom bell. You get the freedom bell, lovely. You get the freedom bell. So everything hurts at the moment, right? That's why we got Come Back Clean. Come Back Clean is the book that's going to help you heal, put your heart back together. Can I video with you? I really have questions. What's your question, love? Uh, why do I always feel off about my relationship when I'm alone, but barely feel it when I'm with him? I'm not sure, my love, without diving into uh, who you are, what your experience is. Yes, freedom bell. Must be the dinner. Thank you. One last thing. Uh, any books for men to understand women? Yes! Oh my God, you guys. Uh, the Perfect Play is coming out very soon. So uh, let me ask you this. Um, so, uh, Salimiro, Miro, um, do you want paperback or do you want ebook? When you pull the plug on a casual relationship, will they ever change your position? Maybe not, and that's okay. Uh, I just got broken up with because he doesn't feel the same but still gets jealous. Block him. Block him. No, no, still sees a possibility. No kissing, no sex. You're not with me. No kissing, no sex. You, like, seriously, and you have no right to be jealous. You don't have the right to say to me, uh, ebook would be great. Okay, ebook is going to be coming out in a couple days, my love. Like, literally, in a couple days, the ebook is going to be available. Uh, so listen, nobody has the right to say, I don't want to be with you, but I don't want you to be with anybody else. So if that's what he's going to do, I'm going to break up with you, but I still want sex and you can't be with other people. Fuck you. This is what you need to say to yourself. You don't want to be with me, but you want to keep me from being with other people. You don't want to be with me, but you don't want me to get into a relationship with somebody who does want to be with you, with me. Fuck you. This needs to be your response to that. It needs to be, no, it's not cute. It's not adorable. Get your shit together or get out of my life. Do you want to be with me? No, then you have to go because I need to clear the space around me for the person who's going to love me because you're not. You have to go. Oh, you don't want to be with me, but you want to be controlling? You have to go. They have to go, my love. They have to go. There's He has zero right to do that to you. Zero right. Yes, the books for men. Yes. So, um, uh, Miro, are you signed up for my mailing list? There's a spot in the link to my bio that says enter your email, your email if you don't want to lose me. Charlie, Charlie just, oh my God, you guys, like seriously, like seriously. Look at this. Look at this. Like, how cute. Did you guys see that? Did you see that? Thank you for the rose. I want to wake up with you. As, as, listen, I am Charlie. I am, my shtick is I am fresh on the upside, comfy on the downside. Always comfy on the downside. You're welcome. Love what you're saying. Yay. Yay. Always here for the goodness, right? Always here for the sanity. Love that you're doing your life so early. I know, I know, I know. Love that LDR guide. Already see things that can be improved. Love it. Good, good, good. Good to hear. 
Amazing. Uh, do I have anybody else who downloaded the long distance relationship guide? Is there anybody else here who's downloaded and read that? Do, 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 do. Why don't you slap? Always with the songs in my head. I did. What did you think? What did you think, my love? Oh, somebody just bought a audiobook. Uh, where do you get that? The Long Distance Guide. Is, it's a free guide you can download. You can find it in the link to my bio. So somebody just got Fix That Shit in audiobook, which, guys, if you want an audiobook, so far it's only Fix That Shit. I'm working on No More Assholes. Um, if you want an audiobook, go get Fix That Shit in the link tree in my bio. The Long Distance Relationship Guide helps uh, create more intimacy, closeness, helps you resolve conflict in your long distance relationship. Why wouldn't you just meet someone in real life, not over the phone? I don't know. Do, 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 do. Why won't you slide? Do, 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 do. Somebody just got their freebie. What book do you recommend me getting right now after what happened? Um, I don't know what happened, my love. I'm sorry. It's a puzzle piece now. Uh, I, I don't know what happened. Loved it. So practical. And also your books are full of heart. Feel like I won the lottery reading. Yay. Thank you. Oh, that was Charlie. Uh, what book do you recommend... Uh, I'm in a relationship. I feel like I'm being overly needy. So it's actually two. Um, so fix that shit and custom made. So fix that shit to help you understand how to relationship with balance. Custom made to give you something to balance too, which is your purpose and monetizing your purpose so that you can start getting paid doing what you love. Is it acceptable to be dating more than one person before committing? Yes. Uh, but use a no kissing, like use a no kissing, no sleepovers for three months dating world. That way everybody's on the same playing field, right? Everybody gets the same consideration, which is I'm going to get to know you. I'm not committing to anybody until I get to know them. How long do you think the talking stage should last? The talking stage should be, there should be no quotations around talking stage. It should be talking stage because talking is not kissing and having sex because then you're not talking, your mouth is occupied. The talking stage needs to be talking. It needs to be no kissing, no sleepovers for three months. So the talking stage should be three months minimum. Going here for the summer, I don't know how to be long distance with him because he hates talking on the phone. Uh, so get the long distance relationship, the free guide that's in the link tree in my bio. Just got separated. He dropped me off at my brother's house with eight boxes because we were living in an RV. Right? If you don't move in, if you don't move into sleepovers, et cetera, after three months, should other dates end? No, if you're if you like you're you're if you do move into sleepovers, et cetera, after three months, should other dates end? Yes. Like that's what the kissing is. The kissing is okay, I have vetted, right? I've checked out what's out there. You, I click with. You, I feel compatible with. You, the affection that I have continues to grow. You, I'm excited about kissing and starting a relationship with. If you don't feel that way, if you don't think that way, don't kiss them. Continue vetting. But once you choose your person, then you're saying no to the other people. But the whole point of using a no kissing for a few months dating rule, because we tend to do that. Most of us, when we kiss somebody, we're not kissing other people. So the no kissing is so that you can see other people. And when you're kissing somebody, say goodbye to the other people because you're choosing a monogamous relationship unless you're not, which is something you need to be, you know, agreeing to before you kiss. No sound.
No sound, you guys? After dropping me off, he's harassing me, so block him. Block him, right? Don't talk about your life as though you have no control. Block him. He broke up with me. I feel numb, but I want to believe there's good people out there. There are. So grab a comeback queen to help you through the heartache and no more assholes to give you hope about what's out there. And boyfriend, I just broke up. What book should I read? If your heart is hurting, start with comeback queen. If you're over it, start with no more assholes and, and start defining your next relationship and getting out there and finding it. But controlling husbands, dump the motherfucker. Do not be in a relationship with somebody controlling. That's abusive. Guys, is the video in the feed? Oh, I can hear you. I have sound. Okay. It's back on. Okay. Uh, what do you do if your partner has been withdrawn for a month? I don't want to push him, but I'm sad. Uh, my husband was withdrawn for a couple of years because he was under stress. So is he withdrawn because he's under stress and he's trying to cope with himself? Uh, Oh, I don't know how he expresses love to me. He doesn't post to me. Hold your hand. Uh, what is that? Biggs? Three? Do you want to come do a live with me? Dealing with the father of your kids who wants to be friends? So you need to co-parent, you need to be friends, you need to get along. So I would say get fix that shit, use the ninja mind tricks in here to ease your emotions and have a cooperative, peaceful relationship. I don't know what you mean, what about men's view? Like specifically around what? We good now. I'm over it. He says he wants to level up and give him what I want. I don't, I don't, sorry, love. It's a puzzle piece for me now. Thank you. Your words give me hope for good things. Yes. What should I do if he comes back? Doesn't mean you need to take him back. You need to be defining your next relationship right now. Uh, because listen, when my ex came back, I said, no, sorry. The man you are is no longer the man I want to be with because I've defined my next relationship and I made it a level up from what I left behind. You're coming and offering the same thing. That's not what I want anymore. I've leveled up what my next relationship is going to be. If you want to be with me, this is what I'm looking for now. Also use a no kissing for three months dating rule because they can say whatever, whatever. Use a no kissing, no sleepovers for three months dating rule. See if they stick around. Do, 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 do. Why don't you slide? Yes, I would love to go live with you. Come, come make it. There's the requests are open. Uh, uh huh. That's cute. I didn't know Canada had a queen, I thought it was just England. Uh, what if you only want to be physical and then kick them out of your house, take money to do it? Why not? If they're, if, listen, whatever happens between consenting adults and they're happy with that arrangement, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. Uh, best way to approach your other with co-parenting in your lessons. So like you just do it, right? Like, like my books are behavior based it is social sciences like i weave my story in there so that you guys understand how to do this for yourself so it's it's storytelling but it's science based and behavior based don't talk about what you're going to do don't say i'm going to start meditating so that we get along better i'm going to understand you better so that we get along better just do it it doesn't matter what you say. What matters is what you do. So just do it. 
Uh, what do I do about the father of my child undermining me with my child? So here it is. When it comes to co-parenting, when they're, when the child is in their house, you have no control, right? This, the, the, people, this is why you got to stop making babies with people you're not going to be with and actually be functional with. So thus, here's the thing. When he's parenting his child, he's parenting his child. When you're parenting your child, you're parenting your child. If you wanted to co-parent as a union, your best bet would have been to pick somebody and have an agreement of how you're going to parent before you had a child together, had an understanding and a love for each other that wasn't going to split you know, you guys up. Picking somebody that you were going to be able to stay with because they weren't going to devolve into dysfunctional behaviors. You're dealing with this because this is the outcome of the choices that you made. And that might sound harsh, but it is the truth. And so, you know, ultimately it comes down to the child needs to understand that there's two different ways of doing things because you can't control other people, right? We can't control other people. I know you're telling him, this is how I want you to parent because this is how I parent in my home, but he's not listening. And there's nothing you can do about that because you can't force them to do those things. So the best thing you can do is say, this is not how we do it here, my love. This is not how we behave here, my love. And do your best to teach him how to behave in a functional way when they are at your house. If your partner is being abusive towards a child, you get child protection services involved. My friend's husband says she doesn't have the right to ask him why they don't have intimacy. Uh, so bedroom questions, I only ask, uh, I only answer in uh, one on one coaching sessions. So if she wants help with that, she can come get a coaching session. How can I help my partner who's withdrawn from stress? Don't add additional stress. Um, don't add additional stress, right? Uh, by making this about you, they're going through their thing. Let them go through the thing. Focus on yourself. Manage your own feelings. Manage yourself and your well-being. Don't make your well-being dependent on their behavior. Get fixed that shit if you need to. Uh, I did the no kissing rule and he literally would die when I would begin to give him small kisses. That's so cute. That's so adorable. I got somebody who's going to come on live. Somebody's going to come on live. I requested. Okay, my love, I'm bringing you in. I'm bringing you in. Uh -huh. My ex and I love things on good terms. He tells other people I was crazy. Why? Because uh, he's an asshole. Just let people, you know, understand for themselves. Hello, lovely. Ben. Hello. Hi. So what Hi. are you talking about today? What's your question? Uh, my boyfriend doesn't hype me up and uh, hold my hand. And uh, these like uh, things that are my love language. And uh, I've been telling these things to him, but he won't do them. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, should I tell him to if he doesn't do these things, if then we break up or what should I do? And uh, also English is my second language, so there may be some grammar mistakes. That's okay. That's okay. I love the accent. Um, how long have you guys been together for? Uh, two years. Okay. And when did he stop holding your hands? Uh, after maybe six months maybe right uh so the best way to future behavior is past behavior is is right and and when you when you say you know hey like i want you to post me on your like does he post on social media regularly uh no no it doesn't okay so the social media thing we can put aside because you know, behaviorally speaking, it's not his thing to post. 
So when it, like one of the things that I say is we don't get into relationships to change people. And so when you say, I want you to post you on social media, what you're saying is I want you to change your behavior in order to make me feel better. And this is where we start being unfair. Um, right. You need to choose the person who like, if he was, if you want to post on social media and then you're like, you know, you know, if they don't post you, you're like, Hey, like you're somebody who posts your life on social media. So I need to understand why you're not including me in that, why you're not showing me off. So there's, okay. there's that. Um, so the social media thing shouldn't be something that creates anxiety because it's not his thing to post on social media. Okay, very good. But with the hand-holding thing, like the best thing I've ever done for myself is get in a relationship who shares my desire for affection. And you're probably feeling rejected due to the lack of affection. Yes. And that creates frustration. It creates sadness, um, right? And those are not good feelings to have. And you've been telling him for the last year and a half, I need more affection. Mm -hmm. Have yes. you made a baby with this person? Have you guys had kids? Uh, no, no. Okay, good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so here's what I suggest you do, right? The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. When you ask him to hold your hand, what does he say? When you're asking for more physical affection, what does he say about that? He says to me that uh, he's um, trying to be better for me. Okay, but see, here's the thing, though. Trying. I'm trying if if it doesn't turn into actual behaviors trying is a bullshit word if it okay. doesn't listen if i'm if i'm trying to drink more water then i drink more water i turn it into a behavior and i get it done if i'm trying to exercise more i exercise more this word try is a bullshit word either you decide to do it or you don't do it He's not doing it. Trying doesn't work. Trying doesn't get more water in my system. Trying doesn't get me more fit. Trying doesn't create more physical affection. He's choosing to not do it. He knows you want it. He's choosing to not do it. Just like I'm choosing to not remember to drink more water. I'm choosing to not get out and exercise more. So he's not doing it. The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior what the last year and a half is and it's you know listen you had the three month honeymoon period um that extended into six months basically and then he just kind of went yeah so a year and a half of him not giving a shit and and so what you're going to face is more him not giving a shit more him having excuses more him saying i'm trying so you do need to leave this relationship if physical affection is important to you because what you are seeing is you are in a relationship with somebody who does not feel physical affection is important. And it's not even important to him since it's important to you, which means what is important to you is not important to him. That's why you need to leave this relationship, my love. Thank you so much. You're welcome. How do you feel about that? Um, I don't know. It's hard. Here's, here's the thing, though. I don't want you to say to yourself, we've been in this for two months or for two years. Like, I don't want to give up that time. I don't want to start over. This is you holding yourself back. You, you do need to grab no more assholes. You do need to fully define your next relationship. You need to make sure that somebody shows you everything you need and want before you kiss them. So make sure you're using that no kissing for three months dating rule. Make sure they are an affectionate person. Do a love language quiz before getting into a relationship so that you see where physical affection lies with them. Do diligence. Get your information about the person before getting into a relationship. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome, lovely. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so
handsome. He says she makes 54 people want to hold her hand. I'm in the exact same situation as her. And I just broke up with him on Monday. We got the freedom bell. We have a freedom bell. She deserves someone who will hold her hand. No question. Yes. Uh, I got a question. Oh, we got another guest. Oma. What do you think about no contact after him breaking up with me? Not a bad idea, especially. Hey, man, how you doing? Hey, good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, what's what's the purpose of uh, of this live? I ain't, I'm not trying to like derail the conversation or nothing. I talk about dating and relationships. Okay, cool. So, um, my my personal thing is right is that I'll start, you know, engaging with a female and everything. We'll start we'll start dating each other. And, I mean, not dating, but we'll start talking and everything. But out of nowhere, like I just noticed, like maybe like midway or something like that, or like they'll especially when they bring commitment and everything, I get like detached, like completely. Like I don't know what it is. Like my feelings just get shut off. Right. Are you kissing by that point? Right. Yeah. We we fully engaged. Like we've you know yeah did everything and so, all that. So here's the thing: you are a biological creature designed to procreate. So, of course, you want to get to the kissing and the sex, right? ASAP, basically, when you meet somebody, like, ooh, like, I like you, like, I'm attracted to you, right? But it's attraction, yeah. not fondness. Fondness is something that happens when you actually get to know who the person is, and you like their qualities, you like their character, you like their personality, you like how they show up with you, you like how they make you laugh, you like the things you have in common, you like the way you have conversations with them. So what you want to do is use a no kissing for three months dating rule, let the fondness develop, and then from there go into kissing and having sex, and it's going to make the kissing and sex more meaningful, which means now you're fond, and now you're adding on top of that, which means you are creating a situation where you feel a lot more for the person, and those feelings are less likely to die down because they're actually much more genuine. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, you man. <laughs> You're yeah, welcome. Bye. Oh, guys, we did an hour. Okay, my loves. Who wants a book walkthrough? Uh, I saw my long-term partner liking photo after photo of women on some site. Is there any hope? Probably not. He's seeking attention. You don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who seeks the attention of other women. Guys, does anybody want a book walkthrough? Who wants a book walkthrough? Uh, he left because he wants to grow and is tired of overthinking in the relationship. What does this mean? It means that the relationship was too difficult for him. And so, uh, listen, the, this is why I keep pointing to fix that shit. Um, so that you don't lose generous long-term thinkers who love you. If you ask my husband, what does he love most about me? He says, and you guys have seen this. He says that it's easy, that the relationship is easy. Uh, so a book walkthrough means I actually give you a short description of what each of my eight books are about. Each of my eight books are about. So we got some yeses on the book walkthrough. So here we go, guys. Uh, come back queen is the book that's going to help you get over a breakup if you're still hurting and it was a year ago or it was yesterday get come back queen this is a book that's going to help your heart heal no more assholes is where you move to next this is going to help you find your next partner you want to make sure you're with a generous long-term thinker not a selfish short-term thinker this is the key you guys to being in a relationship that stays the state of mind that they're in um after the first kiss is the book you read after you choose that great partner. So I teach you how to use a no kissing for three months dating rule. And then I teach you how to transition from courtship phase into reality phase with this new person. Really super awesome transition. You're going to have less anxiety and insecurity than you normally feel. Fix that shit is the book that helps you have zero fighting in your relationship. Uh, when I say zero fighting, you guys, I mean zero fighting. My husband and I have fought for 10 years. We haven't had a single fight in five years. I literally teach you how to do that. 
Custom Made is the book that helps you uh, understand what your purpose and your passion is so that you begin to have balance in your relationship. If you're making your partner your purpose, Ixnay, that's truly dysfunctional. You have to make your purpose your purpose. So in Custom Made, I teach you two things, how to figure out what your purpose is, how to monetize it. This book is a workbook, you guys. Every single chapter ends with you doing exercises because you're going to figure your shit out. Um, and I do want you to get paid doing what you love because it's so super rewarding. Dating 101, this is a textbook. Parents get this for your kids. I don't swear in that book. Uh, this is understanding the drives, behaviors, and emotions behind love. Fake Love Me Not Apply. This is a free ebook. You can get this, the paperback on Amazon. You can get the free ebook in the free book button in the link to my bio. By the way, also in the link to my bio, you get a free long distance relationship guide. I've got uh, a meditation guide that you can download in the meditation resource button. So I really have lots of good stuff for you guys there. Um, say yes to goodness. This is understanding your life and how to be happier in life. This is one of those books that really changes your perspective, your perspective about a lot of things. Um, you can get my books on Amazon or anywhere you buy books online, but if you want an audiobook, fix that shit is now an audiobook, but you can only get it in the link to my bio. Um, we just did the giveaway on Instagram for the free coaching session. We got the winner now. Uh, sorry guys, but you can do the next month's giveaway for that free coaching session. So make sure you, uh, go take part in that. Go follow me on Instagram. I'm going to head out my loves. Uh, I'm going to go do some work. Got to do some more work on my audiobook. I got to make some new web pages, make some exciting stuff for you. Mwah! I love you so much. I will see you soon because I don't stay away for long. Go watch more of my TikToks because I have a ton of TikToks and I make them all different, you guys, okay? You are so welcome. You are so welcome. I love you guys. I will talk to you soon. Oh, yeah. <laughs>